Why, hello everybody! Welcome to the first mall video on our channel of 2022. I figured I'd start it off with a bang here with one of the largest malls I've ever personally been at. And I say that because this mall is over 1,419,000 square feet in size. Before we even get started, I want to make a shout out and thank you to Anthony of Ace's Adventures who took us to the small back in May of 2021 when we took a weekend trip up to the Buffalo, New York area. He drove us up to Rochester so we could see these beautiful Wilmerite malls up there, including this one. And I mean, this one takes the cake. This mall has two opening dates, one of 1967 and another of 1969, and a merger date of 1994. And I say that because originally... The mall at Grease Ridge started out as two malls, one being the Grease Town Mall, which opened May 1st, 1967, and the Long Ridge Mall, built right next door, which opened on October 2nd, 1969. We have a lot to talk about with this mall, so let's just jump right into it and get started. The mall at Grease Ridge is located in Grease, New York, which is a suburb of Rochester. As I had mentioned, it is managed by Wilmerite Management Group, they have three malls up in the area that they still own and run, and they were famously known for the Arondacoy Mall, which has been closed and documented by several people, but most notably Anthony of Ace's Adventures. This mall has 119 stores and restaurants within its main complex and a freestanding Target on the property. And just to name off some of their anchors that they have, they have Burlington, JCPenney, Macy's, Regal Grease Ridge Cinema, Dick's Sporting Goods, Barn and Nobles, Michael's, Old Navy, Macy's Home, which you'll notice that in this video too. There are two Macy's stores in the mall property. There's the main one and then the home store. They even have World Gym, Ruby Gordon Home. It's right in the center of a long line of plazas, chain hotels, restaurants, and car dealerships, which continue for miles in each direction on West Ridge Road, which is New York State Route 104. Okay, so as we get started with the mall's history, as I had mentioned, it has started out as two malls, one being Grease Town Mall, which opened in 1967. At the time, it had a Sibley's, which was briefly a Kaufman's, and then a Bonton, a national clothing store, a Loblaws, Circuit City afterwards, and then when they expanded in the early 80s, they had a Gold Circle, which later became Hills, then Caldor. It's next door neighbor, the Long Ridge Mall, which, as I mentioned, opened in 1969 on October 2nd. It opened with the McCurdy's, and at the time it wasn't fully open. It wouldn't fully open until September 15th, 1971. Early advertising for the place called it the Long Ridge Plaza, but everybody really called it the Long Ridge Mall. It was unique that it had five anchors in it at the time, a Sears, Woolworth, J.B. Hunter, which later became J.C. Penney, as I mentioned, McCurdy's, which then became Kaufman's and now Macy's, and a B. Foreman Company, later Kaufman's Home Store, and now the Macy's Home Store. In the 1980s, talks were already in the works to link the two malls together to draw shoppers back to Greece with, when new malls opened in Irondequoy and Henrietta with plans for massive expansion of Eastview Mall as well. Both malls competed against each other until March 15, 1994, when they finally merged to form the mall at Grease Ridge Center. Construction began on the 300,000 square feet expansion. When it was complete, the new 1.6 million square feet mall was renamed the mall at Grease Ridge Center, and at that time was the fourth largest mall in the eastern United States and 20th largest in the country. It is still the largest one in the Rochester area, one of the busiest, with over 25 million vehicles passing by the mall every year. The section of the mall that we've been walking in so far has been the Grease Town Mall section. And you'll see how the aesthetics of this side of the mall with the murals and paintings all over the walls change drastically from the Long Ridge Mall portion, which we'll be heading into here momentarily. We're still in the Grease Town Mall side, but you'll see where we get onto the other side and Wilmerite really 
illuminates the place with the lights that they put around it. It's beautiful. I just love how they did their lights up around their malls. Uh, it's unique. I wish more malls did something like that, but stay tuned for that as we continue our tour. When the two malls merged together, J.C. Penney ended up moving into a marquee space in the new wing that connected the two malls right across from the beautiful food court that you'll see later in this video with the awesome carousel in it. The former J.C. Penney was converted into a Burlington coat factory on the top floor, and a Lechmere was on the bottom, which is long gone. Lechmere. Sorry if I said that incorrectly. Shortly after mall development, Kaufman's, which had absorbed Sibley's in 1990, acquired McCurdy's as well, selling its original store to Bonton. Oh, yeah. This corridor of the mall that we're walking through right now is where the mall transitions. You're, you're starting to see the lights on the pillars as we make our way through here, but you'll see just ahead the drastic differences in the aesthetics of this place and this part coming up and basically through this whole midsection here is my favorite part of the mall it's just beautiful the colors the light it's really bright i really like it a lot and i hope you do too anyway getting back into the history of grease ridge after the merger other big box retailers started being added to the place. They took over a lot of several storefronts, smaller storefronts other than the big department stores that would normally serve as anchors. They would normally be found in strip malls rather than indoor shopping malls as well. You may have noticed while we were driving around that there were a lot of exterior entrances to stores on top of the almost dozen mall entrances. Michaels, Marshalls, Bed Bath & Beyond, which is gone now, they opened an existing space in the Grease Town Wing. In the Long Ridge Wing, in addition to Burlington taking over the former J.C. Penney space, existing space had been converted into Dick's Sporting Goods, Barnes & Noble, and Old Navy. In 2005, Burlington Coat Factory relocated downstairs in the former Lechmere space, leaving the upper level vacant, which it still is, to this day. In 2006, the mall dropped the center part of its name to just be called the Mall at Grease Ridge. Kaufman's name was retired as they were bought out by Macy's, and the former Kaufman's furniture department on the upper level of the Macy's home store became storage and offices for the place. At the same time, a branch of the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles moved into the former Grease Town part of the mall. The former Sibley's Kaufman's Bonton was raised in 2014 to create a restaurant and high-end clothing wing after Bonton left the Rochester area. As you know, Bonton in general completely went out of business in 2018 due to bankruptcy. On July 15, 2018, Sears closed their store at the mall, which to this day is still unoccupied. You'll see that towards the end of the video. Right now we're walking through the food court, and I, I love the aesthetics of this food court. The lights, the neons that you see around, and we're approaching the carousel, which you'll see here in just a moment. But I, I really hope you can appreciate this place. Again, this mall is one of the most beautiful ones I've been to, besides the wildly aesthetic malls by the Mills Corporation, like Cincinnati Mills, Pittsburgh Mills just to name a few, and obviously the oldies but goodies that I love to go to in central Pennsylvania and around, in North Carolina for that matter. Anyway, really cool double-decker carousel in the mall, really, really pleasing aesthetics throughout the food court, and this whole middle section which you may have seen around the fountain, the J.C. Penney, and the part of the wing we're about to continue walking through now. Yes, I really like the skylights, the lights in here. We were here in the early afternoon, but I can just imagine what it looks like at night when it's dark outside and the lights are the sole thing keeping this place lit. I can just imagine how beautiful that looks.
as I had mentioned, Bed Bath & Beyond closed their store here. They closed it in February of 2021. Their struggles have been going on for years. It didn't just take the pandemic to do it. They've been closing stores little by little here and there. We're currently losing one here in the Pittsburgh area in Pittsburgh's Ross Township neighborhood. <laughs> Speaking of the pandemic, obviously when we were here, like I said, it was May of 2021. You can see for a Sunday, that really didn't do much to this place. This mall was extremely busy and there were barely any vacancies in this mall. The, the pandemic has obviously hit everybody in one way or another and retail especially brick and mortar have been one of the hardest hits I, I see it all the time a store is closing here a lot of family run stores too it's really sad but to see a mall like this still doing well says a lot even though fye is closed as you see in that shot there but you know, honestly, FYE is so disappointing anymore. I don't even bother going into their stores. They took out CDs at a good portion of their stores. And I know, I know, I'm a dinosaur here. I like CDs. I like that physical copies of music instead of just digital downloads. Especially when I go to concerts, the artists, if I get to meet them, they can sign a CD. They can't sign your phone or a digital download. Anyway, I'm going off topic here. My point is, out of all the Wilmerite properties, this one is by far their best mall. It, it It's just phenomenal. And as we approach this Macy's here, we're now getting ready to head down towards the Sears on the opposite end of the mall here. It's just, it's a huge mall. It's, it's weird in shape because of the merger with the two, but I like it. It's very unique. And skylights like that are just awesome. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking here so you can enjoy the rest of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this one. It, I know it took me a while to put this together, but I wanted to make it as nice as I could. And hey, you know, for the longest time, I just had so many other projects I was doing that mall videos just kind of went on the back burner. But I am back. I'm doing them again whenever I can. I have three more to do after this. I have the two in Texas that I... I'm going to be uploading soon, and I just recently filmed one in Ohio. You'll see that soon. But anyway, stay tuned. We just film all kinds of content on this channel. You may or may not know this is a variety channel. I love doing malls. I love doing abandoned. I love doing retail holiday videos, and you may have seen a big tick in uh, railroading and rail fan videos. I'll just put it this way. It's what I love to do. It's what I enjoy. It brings me a lot of happiness to do it. And I just love sharing that on video with you guys. If you enjoy it, thank you for watching. If you don't, no hard feelings. If there's something else on the channel you enjoy watching, feel free to watch it. I appreciate your support all the way. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the look here at the mall at Grease Ridge. Thanks again to Anthony of Aces Adventures for taking us to this place and being my tour guide. And with that said, I will talk to you guys later. Thank you all for your support and love over the years. Let's have a great 2022 here. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters that make videos like this one possible. Oh my goodness, I'm excited for what this year is going to bring. Anyway, take care everybody. Stay awesome and on Kayla's behalf, have a malicious day. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>